like a ship that's tossed and driven and battered by an angry sea. When the storms of life are raging and their fury falls on me, I wonder what I have done oh, to make this race so hard to run. Then I say to to my soul, so take courage. The Lord will make a way somehow. Our scripture lesson is going to come from the book of Romans. Romans chapter number one, starting at verse number 18. But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. They know the truth about God. Because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky through everything God made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, and his divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. And as a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshiped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their heart desired. And as a result, 
they did vow and degrading things with each other's body. They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of serving the creator himself. Well. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for worship. We thank you, God, for reminders like Romans chapter number one that, God, we are to worship you and to worship you only. And, God, for your word, we find comfort. And we thank you, dear God, for that comfort. Now, God, this service, we turn it over to you and we invite you in. We invoke your presence. Holy Spirit, don't only show up but show completely out. Take over the service. Every song, every prayer, every scripture, and most important, the word. Allow the word, dear God, to come through with clarity and with boldness. That it would reach to the deep parts of our hearts, God, that need to be convicted and need to be changed. God, we stand in humility. We stand, dear God, in utter awe of everything that you're going to do. Now, God, have your way. Have your way in this service. Have your way in this place. Have your way in your people. Lower your manservant down into your storehouse of knowledge, God, and give him knowledge that is beyond his own very reasoning, that when he opened his mouth, God, we will hear what you have said, not what he has said. And God, if you do these things, we will give your name all the praise, all the glory, and every bit of the honor. This is your servant's prayer, and it is in Jesus' name that I pray, and my soul says amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Good morning, New Christian. These are your announcements for Sunday, February the 28th, 2021, last Sunday of the month. February went by very, very quick. Uh, I want to thank Reverend Gray for the scripture and the prayer this morning. Thank you, Reverend Gray, for that. Um, this is your sick and shut-in list, prayer list for this week. Um, Deacon B.J. Harrell, continue to send out prayers for Deacon Harrell. Deacon Sarah Parker. Brother Joe Woodson and his wife, Brother Jim Ellis, continues, continue to send up prayers for Brother Ellis, Sister Wanda Murphy, Sister Mary Myers, Sister Marion Smith, Brother Sonny Dunnock, Sister Ruth White, Sister Pat Bennett, continue to send up prayers for Sister Bennett, Sister Rich, Richard Donaldson. And as always, Brother Leroy Tony, continue to pray for Brother Tony. He's home in hospice. Continue to send out prayers for him. Amen. Amen. Please contact the church office if there's someone that needs to be placed on the sick and shut in list or the prayer list or anyone that I missed. Thank you to everyone that continues to send in your tithes and your offering. Each and every week to support this church, um, please use the Givelify app, which will show at the end of this service. Um, drop by any time during the week between 10 and 1 to drop off your offering, or you can mail in your offering to the church. Um, please call the church between anytime between 10 and 1 at 410-566-5063. Um, also, if you need to verify your information. So we can keep that role updated. The adult and children's Sunday school is in full session. The adult session is led by Deacon Bernard Caldwell, which begins at 9 a.m. Sister Edwards leads the children's class. Please review the church website, our Facebook page, or call the church for information on how to access this, these sessions. Um, please contact the church. Also, if you need a book, I believe the last session is getting ready to end and new books are out there for the next session. Amen. Uh, please, Bible study. Um, Stephen Covington's class is 7 uh, p.m. on Thursdays. Reverend Gray's class will be suspended until the Lent season is over. Food giveaway between New Christian and Village Baptist will be next month. Will be the second Saturday of the month. Please contact the church office if you cannot come out um, to, the, the, um, to the giveaway. Um, but uh, 
if you need a box delivered to your home, please, please call the church office and we will be happy to deliver a box to your home. Um, the online fellowship service, New Christian Memorial Coffee and Conversations is up and running. That program is led by Reverend Marvin Underwood. Um, those sessions begin between 1030 and 1050 each and every Sunday. I'll give, a, give you an opportunity to get online have some conversations with each other, look at some faces um, that you haven't seen for a while. Um, so um, if you're interested, uh, please look at the church website to um, look at how to access that session. Uh, the prayer line, uh, please continue to use Sister Walton, Reverend Walton's prayer line. Um, you can access that line uh, weekly, Monday through Friday between 9.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. Uh, she'll be reading daily bread, come uh, devotionals, and praying for any individuals that join her line. Um, the trustees have prepared the tax statements for 2020. Um, they should be ready by the, they, they are ready, sorry. Um, you can pick them up anytime during the week between 10 and 1, or please call the church office and we can also have that statement mailed out to you. Lenten service continues this week. This week, Reverend Barnum preached a powerful sermon this past Wednesday. So we will continue with those um, services each and every Wednesday, beginning at 6.30, 6.30 p.m. Um, all right, this is the last week, last week of Black History Month. I want to thank Sister Monica Massey for her presentation last week on the history of the Black church. Um, ironically, I was home a uh, couple days ago and watching a PBS um, series that was doing the same history of that black church. It was a very good documentary. So yeah. if you have an opportunity, one or two hours, it's excellent. So um, actually that's hosted by um, Henry Louis Gates. Um, so he does a very good job with that. So, um, so this month's this week's presentation will be um, Sister Catrice Cobb. Um, I'll turn it over to her in shortly. But as always, continue to pray for each other. Stay safe. Don't let your guard down. People are still um, getting the virus. Um, so if you're in need of prayer or need information about what's going on at the church, please contact the church office, and she will get that information to the appropriate leader. Um, and so before I um, slow down, there's a card also. Um, just want to thank you, my dear New Christian Memorial family. Once again, my family has suffered a loss, my sister, once again. My New Christian Memorial has been a supporting force. It is greatly appreciated. And that's Sister Kathy Moore. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. Um, as always, our faith continues to be in the hands of the Almighty Father. Um, have a fantastic week. Um, continue to stay in touch with each other um, and God bless you all and now I'll turn the service over to Sister Catrice Cobb for our Black History Moment for this week. Good morning. It is a great day in the Lord and we thank him for his goodness and his mercy for blessing us to see another day another chance to gather together on one accord and praise his name. I bring to you today a Black History Moment featuring a hometown hero, raised right here in Baltimore City. When the Supreme Court in their landmark decision, Brown versus the Board of Education, ruled that school segregation must end, it was Thurgood Marshall standing on the Supreme Court steps with his hands raised in victory, a champion of justice and a wonderful representation of the greatness that Baltimore City can produce. Born, like I said, right here in West Baltimore, over there by McMechan Street and Pennsylvania Avenue on July 2nd, 1908, Thoroughgood Marshall was named after his great-grandfather, he shortened his name to Thurgood later on in life. He attended Frederick Douglass High School, where he was reportedly misbehaving and cutting up so much that he was punished 
by having to memorize lines from the U.S. Constitution. At the time of his graduation, he had been punished so much that he knew the document by heart. He graduated from two historically black colleges and universities. One was um, Lincoln University in Pennsylvania, and the other was Howard University College of Law in Washington, D.C. After college, he started a practice here in Baltimore, but then joined the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, where he racked up monumental wins um, for civil rights and equal justice for Black Americans. Now, the importance of his landmark Brown versus the Board of Education victory cannot be overstated. Striking down segregation in the nation's public schools provided a major catalyst for the civil rights movement. It made it possible for advances to be made in desegregating housing, public accommodations, and institutions of higher learning. Thurgood Marshall understood not only the law, but the shortcomings of the law. And he had a zest for correcting those parts of the law that denied rights to his people, our people. In 1967, he was nominated by President Lyndon B. Johnson to the Supreme Court. Now, he was the 96th Supreme Court justice ever. However, he was only the first African-American Supreme Court justice. When he passed away at the age of 84, former Supreme Court justice and beloved son of Baltimore, Thurgood Marshall left behind a lasting legacy. In addition to his influence on public education and criminal justice, he was instrumental in rulings establishing that states cannot legally enforce restrictions on the sale of homes to minorities and that states cannot bar non-whites from voting in pivotal primary elections, which we know are where many of the key electoral decisions are made. What a wonderful legacy Thurgood Marshall has left behind. We salute the memory of this great Black history hero. Thank you for listening. And I remind you that Black History Month is every day of every year. We have truly come this far by faith. Have a great day in the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, dear God, because when we think back on all of the things, God, that we have to deal with during the course of our lives, when we consider, dear God, all of the trials, the hills, the mountains, the valleys, the peaks that we have to face, God, we come to realize that it's only through your mercy, it's only through your grace that we have been allowed to survive some of the things that we have gone through. Father, we think about this pandemic and we come to realize and understand that in the natural realm, there is a virus that is killing people. But God, when we think about the spiritual realm, there is also a reminder that we have an invisible enemy, God, that we are contending with. Father, one of the biggest misunderstandings is that we believe that Satan is really not real. But God, I've come to realize that there is an enemy. And God, we are to be aware. Father, you said in your word that if we resist him, he will flee from us. Father, then you said that there is no temptation that has taken us, but such as is common to man. And then you reminded us that, God, you are faithful, that even with temptation, you've made a way of escape. Father, as we go through this season called Lent, we come to realize, God, that there are things that we need to examine in ourselves. There are some, some, some things that, God, we need to begin to acknowledge and some things that we need to admit in our lives, God. And one of the things that we need to admit, God, is that we need a closer walk with you. We need to get closer to you, God, so that we can understand how to fight this enemy. Father, you said in your word that we have to cast down all imagination and every high thing 
that exalt itself against your knowledge. And Father, when the enemy is whispering, when he is whispering and he is making suggestions, God, teach us how to fight. When we find ourselves in some corners, God, that we don't need to be in, teach us how to come out. When we find ourselves walking down some roads, God, that can lead to destruction, God, help us to turn around. Father, all of these things we know that you are able to do. But God, we are only going to be aware if we are reminded that we are fighting an invisible enemy. But God, let us not focus on what we can't do. But God, help us to realize what we can do. Father, we can stand strong. We can be steadfast and we can be unmovable. We can have a clear mind, dear God, and we can have our hearts and our attention focused on you. And God, for those things, we thank you. We thank you, dear God, as we move forward to Easter Sunday, as we march closer, God, coming through this season to the, to the, to the sacrifice, to that awesome night, dear God, that you gave your life to Easter Sunday, God, that Sunday that we have set aside in, 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 in memory of you rising from the dead, God, from the Spirit, through the Spirit and by the Spirit, God. We thank you. And God, as we're moving towards, moving towards that awesome sacrifice, God, let us be reminded of everything that you gave up. And then, God, help us to give up some things. Help us to give up our arrogancy and help us to get up, give up our pride. Self-centeredness, God, and help us to give up stubbornness. Help us to give up, dear God, anything that would hinder us from seeing you. For God, this is a season that we are to be reminded what you gave us, not what you can give us. So God, for that, we thank you. Father, you've heard the sick list, all of the names. All of the names, God, on that sick list, each and every one, God, whether it's sickness or death, we ask you, dear God, to take them and put them in the hollow of your hand. A special prayer for trustee Tony, God, we ask you in the name of Jesus that even, dear God, as they say that he's on hospice, we know that you can do exceedingly and abundantly above anything we can ask or think. So, God, just like everyone else on the list, we ask you to touch him, God, with a gentle touch and help him, God, through his difficult moments, his difficult hours, his difficult seconds, his difficult days. Watch over this church, dear God, and help us to get through the season that we're in. Help us to prepare, dear God, for whoever you send this way. Father, if you do these things, I know that we will ever be so mindful to give your name all the honor, all, all the all the honor, all the glory, and every single bit of the praise. Father, this is your servant's prayer. And as I bring it to a close, I ask you, dear God, to watch over your manservant. Bring forth a word, dear God, that won't sound good, but a word that will do some good. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. And my soul says, Amen. Standing by 
standing by There's healing for your sorrow Healing for your pain Healing for your spirit There's shelter from the Come on, let's give God some glory. Let's praise God for who he is. Let us worship him. The songwriter said that there is a bomb in Gilead that is able to heal the soul. Amen. I don't know about you, but I love to worship and praise God for all that he has done. Hallelujah. And on this last day of February it's the last Sunday of the month it's also the last day that we are celebrating Black History Month and it is also the last sermon for this month and I need somebody to know that there is a word from the Lord amen <clears throat> And before I get started, I just want to give honor to all of our ancestors. I want to give special honor to a young man by the name of Chadwick Bozeman and all that he have done in the time that God allowed him to be with us. Amen? Wakanda forever. If you would, please, turn with me to the first book of the Bible. The book of Genesis, chapter number 28. I'll read verses 15 through 21. Genesis 28, verses 15 through 21. Take my text, do a little teaching and preaching, and then take my seat. Amen. The 28th chapter of Genesis, starting at verse number 15, reads as such, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? There is none other than the, this house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. 
And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city had been loosed previously. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then uh, the Lord... Then the Lord shall be my God. I've read verses 15 through 21, of the 28th chapter of the book of Genesis. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you once again for another opportunity to be in the land of the living. We thank you, O God, because in all that we may be going through and all that we have been through, you continue to be right by our side. Father, many of us have been through an awful lot in the past year or so, and Father, you saw fit to keep us here, leading us and guiding us, O oh God, with your spirit. And so, Father, we will continue to praise you. We will continue to worship you. We will continue to give you all honor, praise, and glory. And Father, I also want to ask a special prayer for Sister Wanda Murphy at this time. You heard the sickness, O oh God, and we just want to lift her up, O oh God, with a special prayer along with Trustee Leroy Tony. Have your way in their lives, O oh God. Whatever they're going through, O oh God, touch them with a finger of love and compassion. If it's thy will, O oh Lord, but if it's not thy will, O oh God, we ask that you simply give them the strength to endure all that they may be going through. And Father, I ask right now that you anoint me afresh from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. And I ask, O oh God, that you speak to me and through me so that your people may hear a word from on high. And then, O oh God, when you've done these things, we'd be so grateful to give you all honor, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> And just for a topic for discussion on this morning, I want to preach from, I worship God because he supplies all my needs. I worship God because he supplies all of my needs. Worship is the act of giving reverent honor to God. You can worship him individually in an informal and or a formal group gathering with a designated worship leader. But I need someone to know today that you don't need a formal gathering with a designated leader to worship God. Worship is not an emotion that is dependent upon people, places, or things. In other words, we worship God in our spirit. Uh, in fact, the Bible says in John 4, 24, God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Uh, worshiping God has nothing to do with who you're with or where you are. Brothers and sisters, I've been asked on many occasions during this faith journey, why do I worship the Lord? The answer is because he's been so good to me. He's been better to me, Jerry, than I've been to myself. The Lord has protected me with traveling mercies, my going out and my coming in. He has always provided me with the necessary food and clothing that I need. Why not worship him? Because of his grace and mercy, he has been taking care of me ever since he first introduced me to the world. That's why I worship him, and my worship is for real. Uh, I worship him because it is my reasonable service for all that he has done for me and being such a good God, and my worship is for real. Uh, apparently, J Jacob felt the same way. We see here in chapter 28 that Jacob is on a journey to his grandfather's city of Haran 
to choose a wife from amongst his uncle's Laban daughters. Jacob stops along the journey to take a rest and get some sleep. While asleep, he has a dream. And in his dream, God tells him in verse 15, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Upon awakening, brothers and sisters, Jacob sensed the presence of the Lord in the place where he was and declared that if the Lord can provide food and clothing during his journey and protect his going out and his coming in, then the Lord shall be my God. Uh, Jacob began to worship God right where he was. He even built an altar out of stone at this place that used to be called Luz and named it Bethel, which literally means house of God. And just like Jacob, it is our reasonable service to worship the Lord for all that he has done for us and all he continues to do for us. Therefore, brothers and sisters, our worship should be for real. Because God is our protector. First, we want to look at God's protection. Have you ever noticed that God provides traveling mercies and bring us back home daily? Sure, we may have experienced some holdups and some detours, but he always brings us home. Psalm 119, 105. And 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The psalmist goes on to say in Psalm 121 and 8, the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And secondly, God always provide us with food and water to drink. Jesus says in Matthew 6 and 25a, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink. Now I can't speak for you today, but one thing that I do know is that growing up as a little child, Ron, uh, we had some very lean days back in the neighborhood. Uh, but I can honestly say that I never went a day without something to eat, Bonnie. I never went to bed hungry, not one day when we were growing up as kids. Somebody ought to say amen. God has always provided food to eat and something to drink in those very lean days of my childhood, if it was nothing more than a cheese sandwich, if it was nothing more than a syrup sandwich, if it was nothing more than a bologna sandwich, God always provided something to eat. Mm. And then, and then, and then, uh, finally... He has always provided clothing for our backs. Jesus goes on to say in Matthew 6 and 25b, and I paraphrase, do not worry about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Again, because we didn't have much, Bonnie, perhaps only two pair of shoes and a few outfits. I remember, Tanya, when we got holes in our shoes, Daddy used to tell us to cut out some cardboard and place them in the bottom of our shoes. And because that's what we did, 
I come to realize later on in life that our feet have never really actually touched the ground. Because God always provided clothes for our backs and shoes for our feet. And then, and then all because we only had just a couple of outfits, and sometimes they was hand-me-downs, Jerry. I have the fondest memories that my mama used to always make sure that we had at least one good outfit in case we wanted to go to church on Sunday. Oh, hey, you met somebody. Amen. Ain't nobody talking to me this morning. Amen. She would always make sure out of the few clothing that we have that we would always have a nice outfit to wear to church on Sunday. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. These are the reasons why I worship the Lord. Because Jesus has been good to me. How many of you know my Jesus? Somebody say, yeah. Jesus, who walked almost 30 miles with sandals on his feet to be baptized in the Jordan River by John. Jesus, who was spat upon and beaten unrecognizable. Jesus, who was crucified on an old rugged cross, and he rose again on the third day with all power in his hands. They called him the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley, the bright and morning star. Jesus, Mary's little baby boy, the wheel in the middle of the wheel. Jesus, the rock of ages. I worship him because he is a way maker, a miracle worker, and a promise keeper. He is a lawyer in a courtroom, a doctor in a sick room. He is my bridge over troubled water. He's God's only begotten son. I worship him because nobody Nobody can do me like Jesus. Nobody can do me like the Lord. I say nobody can do me like Jesus. Nobody can do me like the Lord. Do you worship him? I say, do you worship him? If you worship my Jesus, somebody ought to say, yeah, say, yeah, yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. If you worship him in spirit and truth, give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Hallelujah. I worship him because he takes care of all my needs. And my worship is for real. God has never turned his back on us. He has never left us. Regardless of the situations we may find ourselves in and what we have been through, if we have life with a reasonable portion of strength and health, food on our tables, roof over our heads, and clothes for our backs. We should worship him in spirit and truth because it is our reasonable service. He continues to look beyond our faults and meet our every need. God bless you. I pray I have left someone with a thought. If you don't know this Jesus and you would like for him to be your all in all, 
to supply all of your needs. I pray that you get to know him right now. You don't have to wait because someone give you permission. And please don't wait till tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised any of us. If you would like to know this Jesus, if you would like to accept salvation, it's a very simple process. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 10 that if with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Come on in right now and say this little prayer with me. Father, I'm confessing today that Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that he died for my sins and you raised him from the dead. I'm asking right now, oh God, that he come into my life because I am a sinner. And I ask, oh God, that he come and save me from all of my sins. And I will worship him. I will honor him from this day forward until the end of this time. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you've just prayed that prayer, you have just been saved. You just received salvation, and we want to welcome you into the kingdom of God. And if by chance you would like to join this House of Zion, a church that's in the heart of the community, making disciples for Christ, we ask that you call the church office. Talk to someone there and let them know that you have just received Christ in your heart. And you would like to know what else that you can do to become a part of this house of Zion. And not so much so this house of Zion, but perhaps we can help you find a church that is a Bible preaching and a gospel teaching church so that you may further your journey on this road that we call salvation. God bless you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to our God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power. Henceforth now and forevermore, let the church say, Amen. Go out and have a blessed and wonderful day on purpose. God bless you.